Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to get 10 incredibly rare, secret and very powerful weapons in Remnant 2. By the end of the video, you'll have your hands on the ridiculously stylish Ophelion, the insanely powerful Plasma Cutter and many more. So grab a notepad and strap in, let's go! Actually, just super quickly before we get into number one, please note if you are following along and you get lost at any point due to something not matching up, just know that the guide isn't wrong and more importantly, you're not missing anything. Lots of areas and events in Remnant 2 are randomized, so I will point out as we go through the video alternative locations and points where you may need to reroll your campaign depending on the randomized events that you get. And let me know if you want more of this, because depending on how well received it is, I'm also planning on doing a part two with 10 more rare weapons. We're going to start off with how to acquire one of my favorites on the list, and in theory, one of the easiest weapons, and that is the Plasma Cutter. But even this could require you to go through Nerud twice. The weapon itself will be in a crashed ship, which could spawn in either the Aeon Vault or the Timeless Horizon. However, before you even get to that point, to access it, you are going to need the Navigator's Helm. And for this, you do specifically need to be in the Timeless Horizon. You see me now stepping out into the Timeless Horizon in Adventure Mode, because this isn't the area that rolled for me in my story campaign. The Timeless Horizon is the second area that you come to. You will need to go through the entirety of the first area first to see if you're going into the Aeon Vault or the Timeless Horizon. Once here, somewhere in this massive area, you will see these two giant drills off in the distance, and that is what we're aiming for. Once you've made your way up to these giant drills, you'll need to time it right to make sure you don't get crushed to death, but when one of them is lifting up, you'll see a hole in the middle. Crouch down and you'll be able to make it to the middle and drop down before it crushes you to death. Now in here, you will find a load of Nerud zombies ambushing you from all angles, and you will just need to keep grinding them until one of them drops the navigator's helm. From what I've been told, you can physically see the zombie with the helm. However, because I'm using the summoner class here, my flyers did kill that zombie for me while it was off screen. So as you see, I just acquired the loot drop, but I didn't actually get to see the zombie himself. Now that this is done, if you're lucky, the crashed spaceship will spawn in the same biome and you won't need to switch between worlds like I'm having to. But just so you can see, just so you know, this is an option. The crashed spaceship wasn't in the timeless horizon for me, so I've switched back to story mode and I'm going to travel to Titan's Reach because the spaceship should always spawn close to Titan's Reach. Now, as you saw at the start, we can head back inside put on the navigator helm so we can be scanned and there is your reward one of my favorite long guns in the game it's one of the few weapons with an overheating mechanic it does have a free mutator slot available and even more importantly its weapon mod heat sink can't be removed but you wouldn't really want to because it is absolutely amazing for the next 20 seconds it generates 50 percent less heat and it can go to a maximum of three times its original damage cap you become an absolute powerhouse for 20 seconds. If you level this up to max, you are going to be melting bosses with this weapon. Next up, let me show you how to get to a hidden bit of loot in the back of Ward 13. For the next couple of secrets, you are going to need the Biome Portal Key. So either progress through the labyrinth as normal, and it will be given to you by the Keeper once you first found them, or you can just skip this one and head to number three and come back later. Now, once you have the Biome Portal Key, here's what we're going to do. You want to start off in the labyrinth, specifically at the Entangled Gauntlet. And as I'm heading right up the stairs and through the first portal, let me just clarify, we're not heading to the submachine gun that you find with the cargo key. There is actually more loot hidden behind a locked door, even behind that, that you may well have seen through the glass. And this is what we are currently trying to access. Once you get here, head behind the portal and you can actually drop off into this one. Now just head through the next few portals as you see me doing here, clearing out the enemies or just running past them if you want. Then when you get here, follow my steps very precisely as we start to climb up the rocks. There will be lots of climbing and jumping before you're able to make it to the top and eventually you can crouch through this hole in the wall. You will now be above the portal that just spawned you in. Don't drop down, stay up here and you can turn right and climb up further still and then jump over here. Once you come out the other side of that tunnel, you can now use the biome portal key on this door. 
You are now in the back room that you couldn't access before. You can read this journal for some very tasty lore about Dr. Leto and exactly what went wrong and what happened to Earth. But more importantly, and the reason we're here, you can loot the Chicago typewriter, which as you see is an insanely fun and very fast machine gun. And perhaps even better, you can get the full Leto Mark II armor set. It's definitely one of the heaviest armor sets in the game. And if you aren't specced into reducing your weight, you are going to start flopping around like this. But it's very tanky and looks awesome, especially when paired with the Chicago typewriter. Now let's move into number three and get you the Enigma. This one is also in the Labyrinth and you want to start here at the Fractured Ingress. I don't want this to drag too much, so we'll speed it up a bit and just run past the enemies as we head left and then right through this door. Now you need to wait for this portal to show a specific scene. Initially, it will basically just look empty and like a sheer drop. Wait precisely two seconds and then run through the portal and you will land on an invisible floor. The next bit is very self-explanatory, just run forward killing the enemies and right in the center of this area you will find the Cypher Rod. Take this back to McCabe and you can now craft the Enigma. The Enigma has some insanely fun attacks that I'll show off for you now. And as you can see, this gun is insanely good for crowd control. Not only does it shock your enemies and apply overloaded, but it jumps to multiple different targets. And then you can use the Chaos Driver to drive electrical rods into the ground that will tether to each other, lasting 10 seconds each, and dealing shock all around them and between them. The more rods you have and the more enemies you have trapped in your rods, the bigger that damage multiplier is going to be. And this can be absolutely devastating against large groups of enemies. The next one is very easy to get, but extremely late game and also still very missable. For this one, you need to be in the Ashen Wasteland in Root Earth, right near the end of the game. Progress through the entirety of the first half of this area. There is a reasonably cool ring that you can grab on the way, but apart from that, there's nothing much of note, just a load of fighting. Eventually, when you get here, you'll see this giant crater in the ground, and you cannot get to it from any angle. So what you're going to want to do is run up this branch, and you can actually drop down below into the crater and pick up the Hellfire. The Hellfire spews flames that apply burning, which deals 300 fire damage over 10 seconds. And then also has a mod of explosive shot, firing an explosive round that deals up to 188 damage within 9 meters. Obviously, all of these damage numbers may seem quite low, but that's because this weapon is literally plus zero at the moment. If you specialize into this and go and upgrade it, it is absolutely devastating. Not only is this obviously a really good crowd control weapon, but because of the fact that most of its damage comes from burning, it's really good in boss fights where you need to stay very, very agile. As soon as you get a split second, just set your enemy back on fire again and then keep moving and let the burning do the rest. And of course, this weapon is going to be absolutely fantastic for fire-based builds, of which there are plenty. There are so many rings, amulets, and other pieces of equipment that stack with fire damage. So if you min-max this weapon, despite the fact that it is only your secondary weapon, it can easily become your primary damage dealer. Now that you've got that, let's take a look at the Meridian. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is one that may be a pain to find. To find the Meridian, first you need to have access to one of three potential areas in Lossom, being either the Great Sewers, Tiller's Rest, or Harvester's Reach. Next up, you want to start progressing through these areas and hope that you have the event Flooded Sewer. You will know the event has spawned when you come across this entryway. Initially, it will be covered by loads of boards and barrels, etc. You can smash through them and you will now be in the Flooded Sewer. If it's not there, unfortunately, like I had to do, you'll just have to re-roll a few times until you find this event, and it could spawn randomly anywhere in any of these three areas, making the Meridian one of the more awkward weapons on this list, but trust me, it's worth it. Now, when you first enter the flooded sewer, you won't see all of this water like I have here. This is exactly what we need to get you to. So progress through carefully jumping from platform to platform, taking out all of the slimes, and eventually you will find a slime in a pipe. When you kill this slime, 
the pipe will become unclogged and water will start flooding the area. And now we're introduced to one of the many things I both love and hate about Remnant 2. You now have to wait 90 actual real world minutes whilst the sewer starts to flood. Don't worry, you don't need to wait in this map. I don't think you even need to wait in game. So you can go and do other stuff and just come back in a few hours. But the fact that this even exists is incredible and amazing to me. I cannot even fathom how many secrets we still don't know yet because of things like this. Anyway, I digress. When 90 minutes have passed, you can very carefully, trying not to die as you do so, jump across these wooden platforms. Eventually, when you get to the other side, you can loot the Meridian, which may well be the most powerful and devastating but incredibly risky handgun in the game, because it is literally a grenade launcher. Even at level 1, I was melting things with this gun, so I ended up just going around killing so much stuff with a Meridian because it was so fun. But be super careful because all of its attacks are AoE and it can and will blow up you and your allies. Along with its standard grenades, you also have the mod Screamer, which fires a high-powered rocket which deals hundreds if not thousands of damage at higher levels, almost one-shotting all but the most tanky enemies. This is definitely one that is worth the patience to grab and add to your arsenal. Now, for the next one, you may need to grab a pen and paper because this one is a very long process. The next weapon we're going to be unlocking is the Ornate Blade, and this requires you to be in the Council Chamber in Lossom. The first thing you want to do is just make your way through this area. It's a very big area with lots of enemies. But all we care about for the purposes of this weapon is finding the black mirror right near the end of the zone. And also just by this mirror should be the shortcut that you can unlock to lead you back to the start. Don't do anything with the mirror yet. Just open the shortcut and head back to the crystal. Now we can take the other path from the crystal and go and meet the Fey Council. Upon speaking to the council, they reveal that the one true king has been magically sealed away by an imposter, and one of the three members of the council helped this happen. And they are tasking you, as an outsider and independent body, with trying to figure out who the traitor is. And if you fail, they'll kill you. So, no pressure. Anyway, once they finish speaking, head through the Black Mirror, and in the council tribunal, after fighting through a few rooms of enemies you will come to another version of the council room you were just in. Now what you need to do is go to the base of their seats and pick up all three keys and order them in the correct order. This will be blue for High Councillor Savan on the left, red for Oniril in the middle, and purple for Nael on the right. Doing so will gain you access to the room with the One True King's throne. Firstly, climb up the throne and jump to the back wall, and here you can loot the ring, the Assassin's Seal. It's a good stealth ring, but not the reason that we're here. Now you can jump on the back of the throne and loot the Assassin Dagger. Here, if you inspect the dagger and look at the base, you can see the seal corresponding to the Betrayer. In my playthrough, it was Savan. I don't know if this is the same in every playthrough. You will now be ambushed and need to fight your way back to the Fey Council. Please note that even if it is Savan in every playthrough, you will still need to do this or the council will not believe you. Even if you guess the correct council member without the evidence to back it up, this won't work, so you will still need to do this even in your own game. Now you can correctly accuse the traitor and watch their inevitable demise. And finally, you are rewarded with the Ornate Blade, an intricately forged elongated sword designed to keep stronger enemies at bay while remaining light enough for agile maneuvers. There's nothing crazy spectacular about this sword, but it does look very cool, and it does have a free mutator slot, so it's customizable. Now let's head to the Red Throne and get Ford's Scattergun. This next weapon assumes you have already done the Eternal Empress's quest, as it is very early game, and I've already got a video covering this in full. The only additional piece of information you need to know is make sure you are cordial with her throughout all of the encounters, Kneel before her, say all the nice things, or you will not be rewarded with the Seal of the Empress. The Seal of the Empress itself is a decent ring, increases your max health, reduces your max stamina. It's not amazing, but it has a hidden function. Leave the throne room and head into the room here on her right. Now equip the Seal of the Empress, and when you return to the game, the floor will start to move. Move. 
In here, you will be able to loot a chest with a bunch of goodies and more importantly, Ford's scattergun. This is an incredibly powerful 12 gauge shotgun with a widespread high damage and low reload speed. It's a fantastic gun for tankier builds and deals insane amounts of damage up close and personal. Just be careful not to get caught short when you are reloading because it really does have quite a slow reload. As with all the weapons we've reviewed today so far, when fully upgraded, this is an absolute powerhouse and also it has a free modification and mutator slot so it can be customized and fit in with any of your builds. Next up, let's go and acquire the Rupture Cannon. The Rupture Cannon luckily isn't missable, however, it is an absolute ball egg to obtain. Firstly, you may need to reroll Narud a couple of times and find the correct biome which houses the Vault of the Formless. When you do have access to the Vault of the Formless dungeon, just progress through as normal until you get to the boss encounter near the end. This is far from a traditional boss, it's more of a wave survival, and there are two ways in which you can approach acquiring this gun. To reach the end of this boss encounter, all you need to do is wait at each section, fighting off all the enemies, and eventually the giant mechanical spider thing above will rotate the tower so that you can progress through to the next area. Keep doing that until you get to the last area. Eventually, boss encounter done. Ta-da, you win. Then, once you've done that, you will get to a locked door right at the very end. And it's at this point you can now go back through and complete this. However, if you're a bit more ballsy and you're comfortable with your build and you're happy spending longer in this boss, you can do it all at the same time. So let me go back through this area boss free and show you where you need to be. The first area you will tackle just as normal. So kill all the enemies, wait for the door to rotate and head through. Now progress through the second area as normal and once again wait for the entity to rotate the tower for you. And this tower you now want to wait in until it rotates again. Let me just show you on the map exactly where I mean. So this is where we started by the red crystal. We've gone past the first tower and we're now waiting in the second tower. Eventually this will rotate with us in it. And we can now walk through and get the house Lithlet glyph. At this point, if you're trying to do this all at once during the boss encounter, you will now need to complete the rest of the encounter as normal. And once you're allowed out, you can then use the glyph on the locked door. And you can now equip the Rupture Cannon. This is a mid-ranged pistol shotgun with a brisk fire rate, medium recoil and a slower reload. I'm not the biggest fan of this one. It feels like it tries to do too many things and doesn't really succeed at any of them. Maybe it's just because I haven't upgraded it and specialized into it, but I feel like there are much better options. Still a really cool weapon to come and grab, but I feel like there are far better handguns that we've grabbed by this point. Anyway, that's how you get the Rupture Cannon. Still looks really cool, still worth grabbing. Let's move on to the second last weapon for this video, the Aphelion. To get the Aphelion, firstly you need to be in the correct version of Nerud. This is the one where you have to go around and collect the Seeker Keys to open the Core Tower. Now you want to look out for this structure in the Timeless Horizon. It's a giant tower that won't have any marker on the map, but you can see exactly what it looks like on the map here. So now let's head in. Once you've cleared out the enemies, go into the room on your right and take the elevator. Once up here, you want to go forward slightly and then head right again, down the stairs that were hidden to you moments ago. Now there's a series of two more areas and elevators you have to take, and eventually you will be able to loot the override pin. Don't worry, just keep progressing, you will not miss it. Now that you've got the override pin, you just need to complete the main story for this area as normal. So go and seek out all the side dungeons, beat the bosses and collect the Seeker's Keys. Once you've got all three, you can insert them here and grant yourself access to the Sentinel's Keep. Now take the lift all the way up. And before you interact with the console here and trigger the boss fight, make sure you look at this hole on the console and insert the override pin first. 
Now, before you progress any further, just know that when you do this, the rood will be completely inaccessible to you for the rest of this playthrough. Whether it's story mode or adventure mode, you will have to re-roll it if you want to come back. So do not activate the boss fight until you're ready and you've done everything else. Now, when you are ready, you can proceed to face Shah Halar, the Guardian of Narud. Not gonna lie, this boss is quite tough, especially for a solo player, and I did die a couple of times. So finally, during my third successful attempt, I may have accidentally forgot to click record and missed the end of it. But as you can see here, I have just received the Void Cinder. That's what we were after. This is a special item that you will only get if you have used the override pin. You can now take this back to McCabe and get yourself the Aphelion. The Aphelion is a long gun that fires a hypercharged wide arcing line that passes through targets and also is capable through the mod of producing a supernova, which does a ridiculous amount of damage in a very big area. Striking the supernova with the Aphelion's primary fire will increase its explosion radius by a further 25%, its damage by 50%, and spawns a massive shockwave that deals 300 fire damage and also applies the initial burning amount again. This gun is absolutely devastating with a fire build and really good at clearing up both single target and multi target alike. If you combine this with the hellfire from the start of the video, you really will become a flaming god of destruction. This is an absolutely fantastic duo. You've got one close range fire weapon and one far range fire weapon with a fall off range of 65 meters. These two are absolutely lethal together and definitely worth grabbing for your next playthrough. Now let's take a look at one final weapon before we wrap up this video. This very last weapon is again right near the end of the game, very similar to the Hellfire. This time you are going to start in the Corrupted Harbour in Root Earth. Just progress through the entirety of the first section of this area until you get to the second checkpoint. Once here, follow my route up the stairs and then go around these stairs and head onto this route. Then you can jump off, and firstly, you can grab yourself the probability cord. Now double back and keep following this side path. Initially, it will seemingly look like you're unable to access this area. However, just crouch and it will allow you through the routes. And now you can grab the decayed claws. There isn't really anything special about the decayed claws, but they look really cool and they are insanely fast. These are really good to get you out of a tight spot if you're backed into a corner and you have no ammo in your weapons. That is it for part one of the rarest weapons in Remnant 2. If you would like this to become a series and want me to do a part two, please let me know in the comments. And apart from that, all I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.